I'm continuously getting uh, questions about uh, Ice Power 1200 uh, board, mostly about him. And I decided to make uh, uh, Ice Power 1200 Frequently Asked Questions uh, video blog, answering questions. And the first question was, why Ice Power 1200 is killing amplifier industry? Yes, I mentioned it in my presentations. Uh, what is hidden in this question? Why you think that uh, this amplifier is a best in the market? And I will try to answer it in scientific way. Uh, what does it mean, scientific? I asked this question to artificial intelligence, but I think this is the most uh, important uh, wording. Scientific explanation help us understand the underlying mechanisms and causes of natural phenomena leading to advancements in knowledge and technology. What is the key? Understanding the underlying mechanisms. Why things happen in this way or that way. And when we collect information whom we can trust, could we trust the books? Yes, we can trust the books because books are going through a special process. When book is written, then it's reviewed by uh, subject matter experts and they accept that book is printed. In most cases, books uh, doesn't contain opinions. Forums, we can trust forums if we collect sufficient amount of information, we can get a direction or we can get a vector. But uh, if you take uh, single items in the forums, you can get a total bullshit uh, said by someone in a really confident way. Reviews. I will be cautious with the reviews uh, because reviews are uh, uh, paid organizations. And uh, in case uh, device is total crap, they can't say that device is total crap. Reviews, uh, websites, magazines and people live from uh, commissions and payments for those reviews. They should always say something good. Practically, I was not able to really find out is device good or not. In many cases uh, where I'm expert, I would say that device is total crap. And they still say for that money is good. For that money, it's also crap. Sorry. Blogs. Uh, you can trust blogs when it's done by a proven author or proven expert. In case expert, there is a proven expert, it's you are lucky you find the right blog. Finished equipment manufacturers, they are market uh, driven, they should sell equipment and they always emphasize what is good and, uh, and hide uh, what is bad. No way. Chip manufacturers, yes, you can trust chip manufacturers. Chip manufacturers are based on, uh, uh, on measurements and they are addressing professional market with measurement equipment. Any lie immediately will be discovered. In most cases, chip manufacturers are conservative, uh, putting specs uh, below uh, maximum and some, uh, someone who measure after that says that the chip is even better than, than written and exceeding customer expectations. I took one extreme example from audio field words. When you lift your cables above the floor and uh, let's see several uh, several examples very expensive equipment around and uh, cables are lifted and people lives in their their bubble and uh, try to explain it in, in in different ways you can see several solutions and here neither industry rep responded to that buzz and start to build a kind of keramic uh, keramic lifters uh, which are design elements from the engineering point of view, if you have cables lifted above the floor, you have issue with one or, or, or several equipment in your uh, equipment chain. There is a grounding issue and you should fix grounding issue. In case grounding issue uh, is fixed, uh, you don't need to lift anything. You can um, easily even build your uh, cables under the ground and do a lot of stuff. All, all these big messes due to the wrong equipment design at engineering level, developed as broken. And a little bit about uh, bold comments uh, in, uh, in our uh, audio field world or in uh, the music world. Mm. Here someone commented uh, one of my videos, uh, how I built the speakers. Uh, I'm not a speaker expert, but I read several books and, and I knew the theory. And I built great, uh, great speakers, the bass and trolls, gravis and uh, provided uh, drawings and uh, what he's saying inner cabinet walls are not dampened no matter uh, if 30 millimeter wood uh, width is used it should be treated to the weight uh, to the vibration frequency plus no neoprene gaskets are used etc generally he's saying a lot of kind of right words but the key thing what you should ask what is the impact of that comparing to room and it may happen that the room impact is 7,535 times larger than this dampening. 
Also, if you look at books and read that uh, books are saying that typically you should dump about 30% of your internal volume, no more, otherwise they will be kind of uh, overdumped. Such comments are not a rare cases, everyone is saying something, uh, it's hard to say how they uh, learn it or they hear from someone or they, uh, or this is a marketing message uh, driven by some company, hard to say. But I will show you one example, here is a Harbert's lab lineup, I especially took uh, that lineup because uh, this is extreme case when, uh, when all boxes are crazy simple but the sound is uh, at a science level, uh, which means that we have another trend uh, somehow to keep a price up in a speaker business starting to build uh, better and better furnitures. And those are not always uh, theoretically even best uh, designs. And when I look uh, here, what I see, this one is a presenting near field monitor, you need it. Then those two, hard to say, but better than near field monitor, but still hard to say where to put it. I don't see meaning for those two. And then there's a for a two meters and then it's for three to four meters uh, distance, uh, listening distance uh, to examples. I would say there are three tangible, tangible designs which are worth to purchase. And let's look what forums are saying about it. Here is one forum. Someone asked about Harbert speaker, open a th thread and people are discussing. He's asking, is it good? And then some expert is saying that it is a crap. Yeah, and it should be built in this way. But if we look at that design uh, more carefully, a lot of questions rising. First, they are using uh, aluminum front panel. While well, they are using aluminum front panel, that could be several reasons. Maybe nearby they have a factory who, which are working with uh, you know, Pepsi, Cola and, and beer aluminum cans making from them uh, aluminium and you can uh, easily get some aluminium parts if you want, like uh, casted parts. Uh, those are easy to process and you can make a very nice uh, finish of them. They look as a jewelry and then you use it because they look so nice. And uh, last uh, 30, 50 years we are thought that when device looks nice, then it's good. Also, you can see so many ribs, it's excessive des design. The weight is hard to say, 70 kilos maybe. And I, as engineer, don't evaluate that design good. Now, there are some crappy things what comes with such design. But this is a modern design and everyone thinks that this is the best one. And then what's uh, that guy doing? He's opening uh, that uh, or find some pictures, open the box, and then they say it's not, uh, it's not uh, well... Uh, dumped and uh, there's a resonances and there's a lot of uh, crap and shit and that's total lie. Uh, then it's also mentioned that uh, wire, uh, wire, uh, wire thickness is, is kind of average, it should be you know, finger, finger thick. No, come on, yeah. And now let's check what Hi-Fi, that's a magazine, there is uh, some uh, processes, how, uh, how information comes in. Here is an engineer who designed those Harvard Labs uh, speakers, Alan Shaw, what he's saying. My test and measurement facilities give me a sonic microscope into the performance of the speaker. Over the years, I have invested in more and more powerful analytic microscope and small deviations from perfection that I could not observe years ago are now very obvious. Actually, this engineer is able to measure any aspect of audio reproduction. And uh, when I compare those two uh, specialists in a forum and here, I have more confidence in that uh, lifetime uh, head designer than opinion maker there in uh, in a forum. And uh, this is why I, why I think that in forums, yes, you can get uh, very good uh, or, or even trusted information, but you should uh, really use uh, broad uh, research in the market. And one more thing, you can stop this file and read it through, but uh, the key question, definition of amplifier quality, what we want to achieve. And in general, I like this uh, studio grade audio reproduction, it refers to high fidelity sound quality that's typically used in professional recording studios. The level of audio reproduction aims to accurately and transparently represent the original sound without adding any color or distortions. And if we quickly analyze uh, today's amplifier uh, 
parameters which are easy to achieve, which are difficult, high resolution, relatively difficult, flat frequency response, no problem, low total harmonic distortion, no problem, very easy, signal to noise ratio, difficult, especially when you're going up with the power, precise imaging and sound stage, easy, dynamic range uh, relates to power, difficult, consistency and repeatability, uh, with modern manufacturing, easy, but you should use good components. And we should uh, agree or define what does it mean, uh, amplifier quality. And I think that it doesn't put any coloration or any changes, it's, it's completely transparent. And not every audio field will agree with that. If you like a lamp amplifier sound, you are totally not agreeing with that definition. And um, is it okay with the people who like uh, lamp sound? Yes, but later on I show a couple of exam examples why it's not a true quality. Yes, it's pleasant, maybe, but you are uh, bringing coloration and uh, if you like, that's okay. But uh, once we want to compare apples to apples, we should agree about the basic criteria, what good amplifier means. And to be on the same page, we should understand a couple of things, uh, why there is so broad possibilities to do a marketing around it and so many opinions. There is science called uh, psychoacoustics. As a species, we have very relatively bad hearing. Definitely we are not uh, at the top uh, when we are talking about the hearing. And it is uh, our bad hearing is compensated by our brain, where you have a powerful DSP or pow powerful uh, processing. Um, so here is our sensor levels. For, them, for, my, for me, I have a very good sensor levels, but I'm not so good at brain processing. I am not musician, I'm engineer. And how brain works. For example, you have boomy speakers uh, with excessive bass. Your brain at a digital space, because at the, at the brain we are uh, receiving already digitized signal, it is tuning in a way that this excessive bass is normalized. The principle is similar uh, with, uh, as with eyes. When you put, uh, for example, uh, blue uh, spectacles or blue sunglasses, Everything is blue, but in 15 minutes, uh, white balance is uh, re-established and we are seeing uh, colors properly. When you take it out, uh, then again, everything seems colored. When for a longer time we are listening boomy bass, what happens when we are going to saloon and then someone put really uh, exclusive quality speakers, we are listening, sounds like a crap, you know, there is no bass. Uh, how those uh, salon owners are uh, dealing with that? They are giving uh, you uh, speakers for, for a week for a listening or they are selling and then telling that they will take it uh, back if you don't like it. And uh, for, a, for a week you are listening to them. During the week uh, your uh, brain uh, equalizer is reset and you start to hear a proper balance between lows and, uh, and mids. And, uh, after after a week, you say, "No, it sounds fantastic, and meets are great, and and so so good details. It's much better than it used to be." And when you start to listen your previous uh, speakers, oh, that says those are too boomy. Yes, I didn't know it before. So this burning time for a week, uh, it's uh, just to reset your brain equalizer. It's a sales trick. Among us, there are. Uh, very gifted people, their brain processing is uh, is uh, almost incredible, so it's perfect pitch, and there are many people who ha who has it. And then it's a good question, do we trust to our ears, or we trust someone in a mixing studio who is making those recordings? I'm trusting those who are sitting in a music studio and mixing recordings. Uh, and here is one example how I understand high quality amplifier. I sold uh, one of my uh, amplifiers to uh, to person whose uh, wife is professional musician. Um, she is playing Stanway in uh, in Philharmonia, in State Philharmonia. And the um, lady said that finally my Stanway sounds right. And my guess is that they have uh, relatively uh, small uh, speakers at home uh, with a lower sensitivity, and there were not enough. Uh, power for amplifier what they had and when they put a powerful amplifier 
low frequencies uh, come back and, and then this uh, perfection came. Definitely that lady uh, who is a professional musician, uh, she knows how Steinway so should sound. For me it was the uh, highest reward what I can get actually for a product. And summarizing good amplifier definition. Now first I want it perfectly transparent. So instruments should sound exactly as in a live performance. No lamps, no coloration, no warm sound, exactly transparent. Sufficient power. Just to understand that uh, when you have uh, small speakers, they have a uh, low sensitivity and you need a power. When you have a large speaker, you have a large room, you are sitting far away and sound pressure is dropping by, by distance square, you need sufficient power. And sufficient power for uh, amplifier for all usage scenarios is 500 watts. You need a 500 watt amplifier. And for near field monitors from one meter listening, you need at least 100 watt. It's better 150 watt amplifier or more. A low noise. Very difficult when you're going with a power, very difficult parameter. And when you see in a market or in a marketing, no one is talking about a noise or talking a little about it. Small footprint. Technology is advancing. Why you need metal graveyard type amplifiers? I still don't understand. But many of amplifiers in, in six moon reviews in, uh, in, in, in high end, th those are really metal graveyards. And it's a good question why in audio world we are not thinking the same as in, in, uh, in mobile phone world. There was Nokia um, 6010 in the past. And no one is kind of looking for such type of design today. We have Apple, we have uh, Samsung uh, electronics phones, which are uh, small, tiny and so powerful. The same happening with amplifiers. Today we can have a small board with high density, high efficiency, uh, high power in very in, in a small footprint. And it should be that we should aiming for a small size, not for the big ones. But uh, when you look at the trend, industry is still making those I call it metal graveyard type of uh, amplifiers. Why? And then we should talk about marketing. High efficiency. Class D made a revolution. And there will not be class A, B in a, in, a, in a decade. I'm pretty sure. High efficiency. And we are there. Long lasting. I wouldn't look at the complete niche players. Uh, we need the boards which are lasting for a longer time. Reliable. Or well engineered. And... Uh, you should engineer audio, sound, quality, meet thermal requirements and use good components. 